guys, good morning and welcome back to another video. We're joined special guests, Stitchy and Winnie. Okay, so we wanted to update you on what's been going on with Miss Emma. Mm, basically, Monday night, I had 10 p.m. Well, first of all, I'm on my period. And when I'm on my period, I have really bad stomach problems. We've known this. I went to the hospital like two years, of, two years ago for it. Um, kind of like the same thing, but not as bad as what happened recently. Um, but anyways, Monday night at like 10 o'clock, I go to the bathroom. It's like day two of my period. Cramps are bad, but I'm on like medi I have to take ibuprofen, so it was fine. I don't really have any bad stomach problems this period. Um, so I'm just laying in bed. It's like 10 o'clock, 10, 15, I think. I don't know if I was, I got out of bed or I was laying in bed. All I know is that I just got a really sharp pain in my right like abdomen, like lower abdomen. And I basically just like fell to the floor <laughs> and I couldn't move. And this happened before, so I just thought it would go away. And like, it was just nothing because I have so many stomach problems. So it wasn't going away. It was taking my breath away. Like I couldn't breathe. Like I felt like I was gonna pass out because I was like super nauseous. And the pain was so bad, I've never experienced it. So Ellie finally comes into my room after like maybe 15 minutes, 15 minutes of me just <laughs> crying. It was bad. Hyperventilating. Yeah, and I obviously yelled at her. I was like, go get her. So she comes in. So I couldn't stand, I couldn't walk. Like I literally could not move. Like I was glued to the floor. Um. So basically we just go to the hospital because like, I couldn't do it. It was so painful. I didn't really know how to explain it other than like, just like something like bursting in your stomach, like a bomb kind of just going off in your stomach or like someone stabbing you with a knife. And so it hurt so bad that I couldn't like stand up straight. So walking was really painful and just anytime I moved. So like, that's why I was just like hunched over on my floor. Cause anytime I would move, it would, it would hurt a lot. So it takes me like a good 10 minutes to walk to the car. Get in the car, she takes me to the hospital down the road. We get there at like 10.30 and I didn't get seen until, I didn't get a room until 3 a.m. So I'm like sitting in a wheelchair, like dying, like losing my mind. The pain went away because I wasn't moving. Like I was like, kind of like when my knees were up, the pain was fine. It still hurt, but like that sharp pain like went away. Um, and she said to me four times, what if I was actually dying just sitting here? I'm like, welcome to ER. So yeah, I didn't get a room until 3 a.m. And then basically they didn't really know what was going on. So we did a CAT scan with like the dye and everything. And then they also did an ultrasound. An ultrasound. I had to do it both ways, like down below area and then on top of your stomach, like a regular ultrasound because they couldn't see what was in my stomach. So I did those two scans. Um, and blood work. And blood work. So we'll explain like the whole discharge and everything. And then they gave you uh, anti-inflammatory and then a pain medicine. They gave me two different types of medicine because one of them wasn't working the first time. Like I, that one that started with a D. I don't remember what it was called. But anyways, I had great nurses. They were great. They were super nice. But anyways, that wasn't really fun just being, not being, like also being on my period <laughs> and then they just like have to like, it has to obviously involves my stomach. So that wasn't fun and whatnot. So I was at the hospital from 10.30 to like, what time did I get discharged Tuesday morning? One, I think. It was like 1 p.m. It was like lunchtime, like midday. So I was there basically like, not a full 24 hours, but like it felt like a full 24 hours just cause like, I had to do so many scans and tests and like the results take a really long time. Well, an ultrasound didn't come in until seven. So you had to wait yeah. for them. And then shifts. I got a whole new doctor. I got a whole new nurse. So everyone had to catch up on everything. So basically long story short, after all of that, I finally figured out what was going on after the ultrasound. The results showed that I have a 12 centimeter growth is what they called it. Cause they don't know if it's a cyst, what type of cyst it is, or if it's a tumor. It can also be cancerous, but they say it's not common in my age group, so we don't think it's cancerous. But 12 centimeters is like a grapefruit. Like, it's huge. And it's, it's attached to her ovary. My right ovary. So basically, anything over 10 centimeters, 
needs to be removed immediately. It's because, like emergency surgery. Like that's not supposed to be in your um, in your body. And the doctor said that like you have no room to grow a 12 centimeter growth. And um, depending on what type of mass that it is, it could twist your ovary. It could twist your ovary, which can kill you. And then it can also rupture too whenever, um, which is painful, but after that it will dissolve and go away. So at the end of the day, like rupturing would be the best option, even though it's gonna be really painful because then it will just dissolve and go away, depending on if it's this one type of cyst that has blood in it. I don't know, there's like a lot Which of we didn't learn that until the, the next two days later. But basically so. the ER guy said um, that it needs to come out, but they don't have room to do surgery for me because they were fully booked. Like the OR was like fully booked. So they just kind of like kicked me out. They didn't dismiss me, but we also didn't know if I had had surgery that I probably, I had a high risk of losing my right ovary. They just didn't say that. Yeah. So the ER doctor came in and talked to me and he said, um, we, she need, you know, she definitely would need surgery, but our OR is booked up because of the, all the snowbirds here. There's no room. They'd have to call on another team just for this. Winnie. And that she'd have to stay two to three days in the hospital just to get to OR and insurance isn't going to pay for that. So their hands are tied. And basically he said, we'll see your daughter back when it bursts. And I'm like, what? And he said, it's so painful. It's going to have, you know, infection and blood and whatever. He said, we'll see you back, uh, but we want you to follow up with an OBGYN. The OBGYN that they gave us isn't even in our network, so we couldn't even go to that OB. So that was the, so that was Tuesday. Was Tuesday morning. So I called around, I called insurance to ask insurance if we went back to the, a different ER, would they pay or would they deny it because we were just seen and released and made a bunch of phone calls and insurance said they would pay for it. So we were going to go up to an hour away hospital because they said their OR wasn't booked. Just to get it removed because the pain was so bad Tuesday night and then going into Wednesday morning. And we didn't, I didn't want it to burst on her. So, because then I'd have to probably call 911 because she wouldn't be able to walk, basically, is what he said. So, um, on... <laughs> Winnie, ow! <laughs> Wednesday, right? Mm -hmm. Her, I finally found an OB that could get her in, which is, you have no idea. I don't even know how to stress to you. To get in a doctor within a 24-hour period is just not possible in Florida because the amount of people that live here, there's not enough doctors, not enough medical staff. There's just not enough hospitals. I mean, everything is so overrun right now. Um, they squeezed her in. He's so great doctor too. It was probably yeah, he was so <laughs> nice. Uh, he's a younger, he, well, he will be now. <laughs> he's your, younger, he's pretty cool. I don't know. Anyway, super nice. But so we went into the OB at 10:30 on Wednesday morning. Yeah, and he basically said the same thing. They don't know what type of growth it is, and they're not going to say what it is because they don't know. I did another ultrasound at the OB, like a nurse did it, to see if, if they could see what it was filled with, either if it's fluid or blood. If it's blood, there's a certain word for it. it's like hemorrhagic. Hemorrhatic. Hemorrhatic cyst, which is what you want because that will dissolve on its own. Then there's like one where that needs to be surgically removed. There's another word. I don't know. I so really the hemorrhatic fills up with blood and then it dissolves itself. The other one is filled with infection and other matter and that you don't want that one because that has to be surgically removed because it doesn't go away on its own. And it can also be a tumor. So they yeah. don't, they just don't know what the 12 centimeter <clears throat> thing is made of basically. And he tried to see on the ultrasound, but couldn't see. Show. And he couldn't see the full ovary. So we did learn on Wednesday why no one would do the emergency surgery is because it's so big that my right ovary would probably like I just have a really high risk of losing my right ovary which isn't ideal you can still live with one ovary but like 
I'm like 20. Like I don't want to well, lose my right. Well, fertility ovary. reasons, you need oh, each ovary releases a certain amount of eggs. So if you only have one, you're probably going to have a hard time getting pregnant when you do want to have kids, and then you'd have to go on fertility pills, which then this is going to give you and I didn't, twins. I, no, I didn't. Yeah. So we had no idea the surgery could be a risk of losing your ovary, which I wondered why every time we went somewhere, they kept asking us if you're okay with the blood transfusion. And I was like, excuse me, what? And like every doctor asks us that. Do you remember? Well, yeah. And so he explained to us that if it's the second kind of tumor or cyst and he removes it, the minute he cuts into the ovary, you, mean the you cyst? no, the minute he cuts into the ovary to remove the cyst, it immediately starts bleeding and you just start bleeding out. So it's a very risky, that's why the ovary can lose its blood flow and that's how you can lose your ovary. But I had no idea that you can bleed that much from removing a cyst in, on your ovary. So we learned a lot on Wednesday. Since no one knows what it is specifically, they don't know what type of surgery I would need to have, whether it's surgery for a tumor, whether it's surgery for a certain type of cyst, they don't know, and that's also another reason why they won't do it, even though a 12 centimeter cyst growth shouldn't be in your body. And it is technically an emergency surgery since it's so big. Um, so now I'm scheduled for an MRI today at 9 p.m. And the MRI will show what type of cyst or growth it is. And it'll give a clear picture of like if it's filled with blood or infection fluid, stuff like that. So then they'll know like what I need to do. So, what surgery? Yeah, if I if even surgery. need surgery. Because if it's a tumor, he said, if it's a first cyst, you do nothing. If it's a second cyst, you're high risk and you can lose your ovary. Third thing, I if it's a my, tumor. I lose it completely. <laughs> yeah, they have to remove the ovary and part of the uterus completely to make sure they get all of it. Because she's so Because it could be cancer. She's so big. Yeah. But it's a very low chance of it being cancerous because it's not common in my age, age group. Yeah. So I don't think it is at all. I don't either. Because now that it's day... So now it's Thursday. It's Thursday. Now that it's day four, I'm fine. But well, you're still sore. Still sore. It still hurts to laugh. I finally have an appetite. I didn't eat for three days. Everything just sounded gross. I was going to throw up if I did eat. So I didn't eat, didn't really even drink any fluids either because everything just, I don't know. It was just a little really bad pain. Now I can finally eat. I just had lunch. And you can walk standing up. Yeah, I can, I can <laughs> finally not be a hunchback. I literally have icy hot on my back from being hunched over for four days because my back is really sore. Um, and like I can like just move in general. I couldn't move before. Like I was completely on bed rest. Now I can like actually walk. Like, I could probably drive my car now. <laughs> I couldn't do any of those day-to-day -day activities. Like, showering was such a pain. That was horrible. Just, like, and she's not, they didn't put her on restrictions. Like, yeah. you, you're not on restrictions when you have these. Mm -hmm. They're issues. common. Cysts are common in women. Um, it's just because mine is so big that it was pushing on my uterus. And that pain is pretty intense, <laughs> I guess. Well, yeah, and so he did explain to her getting on birth control mm -hmm. uh, helps cysts to not form during your monthly cycle. He needs to figure out, she needs to Google or look into what type of birth control she wants to start first. And he said, you know, it, we can get you on a birth control and if it causes problems or symptoms, we can immediately take you off, try something else, keep going. So... I took triphasal 28. That's what I took for 20, 30 years. Never had any problems with it. So that might be something she can look into uh, starting that one. But um, And then he also mentioned to me when she was getting her ultrasound that Ellie needs to probably see a OB. Normally you don't see an OB till you're 21. But he said you're probably going to have to have your younger one see an OB because usually if this is a whatever blood cyst let's call it or um, a regular cyst they're usually hereditary 
which I did have a lot of problems with cysts. I was on birth control at 14 because of my irregular periods and uh, cysts and w painful periods and whatever. So Ellie probably will need to either get on birth control to regulate her periods and regulate her cyst formations. But it, he said she's that- She's never had one. What? She's never had a cyst before. No, but you didn't until you were like 16, 17 anyways. That's what he was saying. When she's like 15, 16, she might need to see. For next Wednesday, was it Wednesday we went? Yeah, next Wednesday's appointment. She's gonna talk to him about ordering birth control, so. That's where we're at. No, the lady just said to call when I have the blood work done and then the MRI done. We don't know what day it is. Remember at the desk? Uh, I'm just supposed to, we're just supposed to call when I get everything done. I thought she made you an appointment. No. Okay. So it could be Monday, it could be Tuesday, it could be Wednesday, Thursday. So yeah, that's my past week. I was supposed to leave on Wednesday to go to a- uh, Airbnb? Yeah, with Casey for her spring break and I couldn't because I, ow, it hurt. <laughs> it's all on my deathbed, so we figured that all out though. But Are you guys gonna make plans again? Well, yeah, in the summer. So it sucks, she missed her trip. It's just not, not good timing, like, so like I was supposed to be on, like summer's almost here, like. It'll do it. Yeah, until we get a call, oh yeah, it's pretty serious, you need surgery. And then that's what, two to four weeks recovery. But yeah, that's my past week. Um, I know a lot of you wanted to know what happened and a lot of people were asking what happened and who was in the ER and whatever, so. Honestly, is it a surprise? Who else in the family's in the ER as much as me? Oh, wait, wait, I, no, no, no. I came home Wednesday, was it, or Tuesday, and Marco's, I gotta go. She said going to get Ellie from practice, she got hit in the face with a softball. <laughs> she thinks her nose is broken. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. I literally just left the hospital. So he flew there and got her, and thankfully, it's definitely not broke. She's gonna have a black eye, for sure. Smashed her in the side of her face. Um, she was mad because the coach was yelling at her, throw to third, throw to third. And she was just dazed because the ball just hit her in the face. So she said she walked off. I don't know, but yeah. So that was my four days uh, that she literally came home and then the other one got hit in the face with the softball. So it's been fun. It's been very stressful. I'm sure my little monitor thing, she's gonna be like, what has happened? All right, well, we wanted to hop on here, I'll let you guys know uh, all the updates. All right, well, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and the update. Um, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and we will see you guys tomorrow back, actually we will see you Monday, uh, back with more videos and you guys have a great weekend. Stay blessed, do something positive, and say a prayer for Emma. And uh, we will see you guys Monday. Bye. Bye.